Coming up on today's show, we report on the development in our surrounding area. And we have a brief announcement from Beta Club. Stay tuned, you're watching Roar TV. Hey Oviedo, I'm Brady Mashburn. And I'm Luca Oliva. Each of us has to endure the construction near our school campus and the traffic that comes with it. And if you've lived in Oviedo long enough, you've seen changes happening around the entire town in the last several years. For more on what these changes are bringing to Oviedo, here's reporter Kaylin Herbet. The quiet little city of Oviedo has been widely known for its family-friendly environment and small town community feel. But in the past few months, the city has become unrecognizable amidst the road widening, residential building, and all around chaos. But elected city officials say that the change is required by the state and necessary to support population growth. Every 20 years, you go through what's called a comprehensive plan update. Um, and that's something we just did. And what that is, is the state requires that we are able to accommodate in our zoning in the city the growth that is coming. A lot of people are like, we don't want any growth, we don't want any change, we don't really have a choice. There are many changes in the works, affecting students and long-term residents alike. The once small rural town Oviedo was in the past is becoming a Floridian hotspot. When I was growing up, of course, Oviedo was probably around 2,000 people at the most, one's traffic light. That compared to what is now is extraordinary. The biggest thing is construction in front of Oviedo High School. And the plan there is to widen the road from two lanes to four lanes, and there's gonna be a big median in the middle so you can kind of like pause as you're going, going through. New stacking pattern will be coming pretty soon, and that's probably the biggest thing. So there, there's only two really big projects going right now, and that's uh, a thing called the Dwell behind, you know, kind of by the Oviedo Mall, behind those buildings there on 426. But there's gonna be, I think it's like 350 or so, luxury apartments back there. And same thing for the buildings uh, right across, you know, kind of behind Chick-fil-A across from Panera. These changes are being done slowly and smartly trying to preserve as much as Oviedo's trademark natural beauty and small town charm as possible amidst the thriving population. There's two ways to tackle that. You can say, we don't want it, but we have to do it anyways. So we just kind of put the numbers in there and see where it goes. Or we do it the smart way, where we say, okay, we have to put this growth into the city, so let's put it where we can handle it. And while the Oviedo chickens have been replaced by construction workers for the time being, Oviedo still remains an amazing place to live. And the vision for the city promises to deliver a place that's better than ever before. It's gratifying that Oviedo is a place that the people that were already here um, helped shape it into a place that other people wanted to come to. This is the best place ever. We've got a good balance of you know, kind of a country vibe and also a super duper city vibe. And there's nothing like the people here. And while this development takes place, who represents our city and speaks up for the people is more important than ever. And there are many ways Oviedo can still remain a community crafted by the people. Get involved. So you're never too young to get involved. Um, and local elections matter. So I, I would say that more more than any state or federal level, what affects you in your day to day, that stuff's important, but your local elections and, and leaders and city, they, they really matter. Although the future of our city feels unknown, Oviedo continues to shine bright amongst current destruction, promising to be a place that residents can continue to be proud of. For War TV, I'm Kaylin Herbet, reporting. D&D Club will be meeting in Mr. Langevin's room, Building 5, Room 23, on Thursdays for the month of September. There will be a Rho Kappa Social Studies Honor Society informational meeting today from 2.30 to 3 in Mrs. Jenkins' room, Building 8, Room 27. 
The first French Club and French Honor Society meeting will be held today at 2.30 in Mrs. Huffman's room, Building 13, Room 8. They will be discussing club plans for the year and t-shirt ideas. Best Buddies will be having an interest meeting today after school in Mrs. Rogers' room. Best Buddies is an inclusive club that builds friendships, offering social mentoring for students on campus with intellectual and developmental disabilities. There will be an interest meeting today for all girls interested in playing soccer. It will be immediately after school in Coach Wiseman's room, Building 12, Room 17. A reminder that Beta Club applications are located on both Beta Bulletin boards if you still need to pick yours up. The deadline is tomorrow. Auditions for the Homecoming Talent Show will be today at 2.30 in the auditorium. Bring any props or music to showcase your talent for the audition. Participants will have a chance to win free homecoming dance tickets. Please contact Mrs. Darling or Ms. DeLong for more information. The first art club meeting will be held today after school in room 522 from 2.30 to 3. The Pop Safari Club will hold their first meeting of the year in Mr. Lander's room, 8-226, today immediately after school. The meeting will last roughly one hour. New members wishing to discuss topics related to popular culture are welcome to attend this interest meeting. Hey all you beta people, I'm Spencer Mala, and I'm here to remind you that beta applications and your pictures are due this Friday. Dues are $40 for new members and $25 for returning members. Please leave them enclosed in an envelope under Ms. Shea's door or in the front office. Go beta! Have a great day, Ovito. Watch some football tonight. And as always, go, go Lions! Lions.